Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Rabbit Dog's House, where we like to discuss lost or forgotten horror gems. I'm your host, Justin Steele, and tonight we are going to discuss 1997's Intensity. Based on the 1995 novel by Dean Koontz and directed by Eve Simino and starring John C. McGinley, Molly Parker, and Piper Laurie. Intensity follows China Shepherd, a young woman accompanying her friend Laura home to a Thanksgiving dinner with Laura's welcoming family. As everyone settles in for the night, a mysterious man breaks into the house, kills the family, and brutalizes Laura. China manages to remain undetected and struggling with her own psychological demons, China resolves to follow the man on an intense journey full of twists and turns. Now, for those familiar with the 2003's polarizing film High Tension, you might have noticed some similarities, and in this episode, we will discuss the far more direct, no chance in how they are coincidences, similarities. The novel by Dean Koontz had me hooked within the first three pages, and the 1997 adaptation holds up well today and is full of terrific performances and an intense, no pun intended, ride. Also joining me tonight is my co-host, Zena Dixon. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us for another episode of The Rabbit Dog's House. Thank you, Zena Dixon, for joining me tonight, the real queen of horror, to talk about intensity with me. I'm so excited about this. Oh, my God. Well, first, thank you again for inviting me, and thank you for the movie, because, like I was telling you before, I felt I, I felt like I was missing out in life. You know, I wish well, I would have watched it sooner. For sure. Well, and you know, for you viewers watching, we're going to go ahead and give you a real quick non-spoiler what we thought of the movie review, but then we are going to go ahead and do some spoilers because we want to comp- we want to talk about the movie freely and also we have some comparisons to make with another movie that is polarizing and has you know, in my opinion, ripped off the novel intensity. Um but um you know, I just say real quick, yeah, I think it's a fun thrilling ride. You said it, I said it, it lives up to the name intensity, you know, but it has this great character development. I know you loved, and I certainly do too, love John C. McKinley's performance. But for those of you who just want to know whether we liked it or didn't, we certainly like it, and I recommend it. And Zena, what what do you think? You recommend it? Absolutely. And again, thank you for, you know, recommending this because it all started with a tweet. I was tweeting about a movie that we'll talk about later on. Um, my husband, he's never seen this, seen that movie, but he's always wanted to see it. So I was like, what? I'm going to like bless your life, you know? And so we watched it. He, he, you know, he really liked it and stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. Then you told me like, hey, have you checked out Intensity? I've never unfortunately heard of the movie. I've never heard of the book. Of course, I've heard of the author. And so then, you know, I was really excited to check it out. This is a mini series for those of you who don't know. And it's about three hours long. And it is directed by, I might butcher his name, but it's like Yves Seminole. That's it. Yves so, Seminole. That's it. Yes. Oh, my I, I, God. I practiced it. I practiced it. Because okay. well, because oh. he's, he did Mother's Boys, which is one of my favorite, oh you know. My so. Yes, that's one of my favorite movies, too. Oh, right, right. Okay, good. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I, I think I did know that. Yes, because it's a great movie. But anyway, go on, go on. Oh, my <laughs> Now I'm going to have to rewatch it tonight. But right. basically, you know, I kind of went in a little bit blind. But when you were telling me about it and saying that, hey, no, it, it literally takes certain things. And I'm like, okay, well, cool. So I went in with an open mind. I was really excited to to watch uh, Intensity. And like you said, it truly lives up to the name Intensity because from the opening, it's it really is intense. It is honestly one of the best thriller movies, one of the best miniseries made for TV movies that I've ever watched. And it's unfortunate because I don't feel like a lot of people know about it. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it more, but compared to the movie we will discuss, kind of like what we uh, we talked about earlier, this is more of a clean version of it. This is a true psychological thriller. And I feel like this is the kind of movie that still, it, it can go beyond those shocking, gory scenes. Don't get me wrong, I, I love those scenes. I Absolutely. love them. 
Absolutely. But it, this wasn't this wasn't necessary, you know. And it's I'm not gonna lie. Um, it really kind of stresses me out a little bit when I think about the killer, you know. Um, was Mr. Vess? We'll call him for sure. He uh he really just freaked me out. Like I he's just such a he's terrifying. Just simply putting it that way. But yeah, like I again, like you said, the the acting, the script, the development, um, the it's still violent without being violent, you know, overly violent, mm. and it's very believable, you know. You know, sometimes you watch some thrillers and it's just like that would never happen, but with this one, all the way. And I I could not agree more, especially with like, you know, <clears throat> with the gore in the other one. And I will say it came out at a time with like Hostel and um, Saw and all that, where like it, it became more about like the realistic look. I actually appreciated the gore in the other movie, right. but it um but it is not necessary. And that is the major difference between the two. So, you know, how I came into this scene, it was I was it was probably about 2002. I had read Dean Koontz's Intensity. Few books have I read where like three pages in, I am hooked. Like, I don't know, something about the character of China, played by Molly Parker in this movie, who I thought did an amazing job. And uh, but also the sort of like, who's this mysterious killer played by John C. McGinley, who in the movie in the movie played by and he's amazing. But the book got me going right away and it left such an imprint on me that when I started watching 2003's High Tension and uh, I'll try and make it quick, folks. But so I'm watching High Tension and I see these two girls going home to the one girl's family. Mm -hmm. Nice, welcoming family. The main girl, she's kind of a loner. And I'm like, oh, OK, that actually just in the few scenes, something about it, the way they're driving through like a cornfield and stuff, because in the book that's like mentioned, I'm like, gosh, that reminds me of that. Then all of a sudden she's the, you know, Marie in high tension is alone and is alone upstairs. She hides under the bed. She makes everything neat like she wasn't wasn't there. And I'm like, boy, that's just like China in intensity. Then all of a sudden, she's hopping into a camper, following him to a gas station, sneaking into the gas station, going on a ride, chasing him. I'm like, um, this is intensity. Like, I'm sitting there, like, literally watching it, like, um, what just happened? Because I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, this has got to be, this has got to be, like, it's going to say, like, based on a novel by Dean Koontz at the end. Right. And there's no, there's nothing to the end of it like that. And it, even as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, intensity high tension they even have a similar ring to it i'm like this makes sense no recognition or acknowledgement whatsoever and the director what's it it's like aja aja alexandre or something like that he was actually asked about this at a at, from i think his name was like glenn hovel from the herald tribune something but mm -hmm. he was asked about this, like, hey, this is kind of like Dean Koontz's intensity. And the Aja completely skirted the issue. Finally, years later, admitted it, that, like, he read the book, et cetera. But his his whole comment was like, well, this is, this is, this film, High Tension, is a film for all horror movies. It represents all horror movies. So I'm like, wait a minute. You're willing to, you can't give the guy who actually wrote this credit, but you can credit these nameless horror flicks. And in the special features, Xena, in the special features, he totally says like, in high tension special features, he's like, well, what really made this movie high tension so good was the writing. It comes down to the writing. And I'm like, well, sure. The right you, you stole the novel from another writer, like oh, or the story, yeah. everything, because it's literally, you know, again, right? Okay, so there's the sequence where she's chasing in the car. I mean, it's almost over, and then it splits into a completely different way. Yeah, intensity, both the novel and book haven't even reached their midpoint yet. So, like, 80 80 to 90 percent of high tension is literally the the broad strokes of intensity now there's some character development and interesting stuff but even like the killer in that one he's this big burly guy but he has a little bit of a sense of humor too when he's in the gas station i'm like it's just it's edgler vest but in my opinion it's literally like they sat down it'd be like sitting down and watching the original halloween and you're a filmmaker and you're you're like oh i'm gonna make a movie 
and I'm going to make a movie about a young kid that kills his sister. And then 15 years later, he goes home and he stalks, a, he stalks these babysitters. He kills the babysitter's first friend, second friend, the boyfriend. He traps the babysitter in the closet. And then you find out it's all in the babysitter's mind. I mean, like that's what high intensity or high tension is to me. Right. Like, I'm like, what? So, and the thing that kills me though, too, Zena, about it that I find the most frustrating is I'm one of the people that did like high tension. I thought it was scary. Mm -hmm. And you, you were talking about the gore. And yes, the, the level of gore is so different, but it came at a time with like Hostel and all those movies. And I did not, I don't want, I, I love like Gary or Gentle Horror. Like I like that kind of gore where it's like art almost. It's like, right. Does it look so real? I don't want to sit there being like, did that guy's eye just fall out? Like, I don't want to think like that. You know, I don't want to be like, how did they do that? So anyway, so, but I find it frustrating because even though with the gore of that, I actually thought it was scary in a good way and enjoyable. And I love the style of it, but he's had a pretty successful career since with like the, the uh, Hills, the Hills have eyes remake, et cetera. Like, I just find it like to not credit Dean Koontz, who, by the way, totally took like the classy approach to all this. He's like, well, no, I'm not going to sue. Uh, it's just my movie, my book is more of a psychological thriller, you know, and they wanted more of this like gory stuff. And he's like, I just find that a little distasteful. He's <laughs> like, but I'm also not going to bring it up because I don't want more attention than given to, you know, to this film, to that film. And I think that was really cool of yeah. him, yeah. like in a world where everybody's suing everybody. But anyway, I just, you know, that's sort of the comparison. I'm, I mean, I just want people to know out there, like, high tension. For those of you that find it polarizing or you don't really like the ending, check out Intensity. Either right. the, the miniseries or the novel, you're going to get that same exact story with a much better ending, in my opinion. Especially because it's like, and that's only the first half of the novel. The second half of the novel and movie is this whole, more, way more intense, just yeah. as much. And everything in it i think you were starting to kind of say this but like everything in it could be done and they show you how it could be done you know with china like the the sort of stuff she has to go through and from here on out we will give some spoilers no more spoiler or no more no spoilers we're we're not going to ruin the ending for anybody but we're going to give you some of the broad generalizations of the second half of the movie at least and i just think like it's frustrating to me that like people know high tension and they're never, so many people don't know this mini series made for TV movie that came out that's actually really well done, like top line, but it came at a time before TiVo and on demand, et cetera, where you could just catch up. You had to either watch it then or you missed it. Right. But uh, okay, now I want to switch over back to you, Zena, a little bit and just, uh, cause I, I mean, I clearly, I loved it. I thought like, great. But I know that one thing that really, uh, really attracted you to watching it was John C. McGinley's performance of yes. Edgler Vess. And uh, I just want to say one more time, Eve Simino, Mother's Boys, check it out. I love it, too. It's one of my favorite, favorite movies. Jamie Lee Curtis, Evil. Love it. But anyway. More, please. Well, I, I felt like, you know, John C. McKinley, I felt like, again, he did a great job. It was believable. He was just, like, psychotic. I feel like he should teach an acting class. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. On, on how to do that. He goes from zero to 100. You know, at first, it's like, when I say that he's believable, it goes even beyond the acting. Because it's down to the point where there was a particular scene where, you know, I was thinking to myself, well, maybe... Maybe China. China's the the main girl. Um, she's she's like a waitress, and she has a lot of, you know, she has kind of like a a horrible upbringing, a horrible childhood because of her mother and her stepfather. It was just like they would just terrorize the, this poor girl. Just it was that bedroom scene where she's under the bed. It's yeah. just like it's heartbreaking. Heartbreakingly it's horrifying. Heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's crazy. Well, before I, I'll go into that more, but. You know, with China, when she was she was having a conversation with John, this was like this is me jumping ahead, and you know he he um they were you know face to face, and at this point I'm thinking to myself because you know automatically sometimes when I watch horror movies it's just kind of like you know or not even horror movies but watch a thriller or a suspense it's kind of like you know oh man like why doesn't she do this why doesn't she do this you know but it's like in her case I don't really feel like she did anything wrong. You know, like she was tired of being the victim. Yeah. And for someone who suffered from abuse, like she suffered from abuse all of her life, she doesn't want to be the victim anymore. 
And I totally get that. You know, she wants to take back her power. And so it's like, honestly, as the viewer, you're rooting for her. You want her to win. Um, but with, you know, John's character with Mr. Vesser, um, Mr. Vess, it's kind of like, okay, when I say that he's believable, it was kind of like, I keep on dancing around it. But when he was having a conversation with China, and I was thinking to myself, like, man, what, what could she do? Like, well, maybe she could do this. But then I realized, you know, seeing um, the Vess character, there is no, like, talking him down. There is no compromise. There is no, because he's psychotic. And I know people will joke around and talk about, oh, this person's psychotic. He was true and true a villain. You know, he was sneaky. He was violent. Um, you, he was just uncontrollable. You know what I mean? So for me, he really, really stole the show. Um, I believed him so, so much. Like, yeah. So, but, and then even going back to what you were saying with high tension, like you, you know, I, I like the movie, you know, but I'm not that I don't like it anymore, but it kind of makes me look at the movie a little bit different. Yes. And I am sorry, because I agree, but that's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry to do that to you, but I know what you mean. No, no. I like, I get it. And it's just like, I understand where you're coming from, you know, from this and, and like, even why you're passionate about this, because it's true. There aren't a lot of people that know about this, but the crazy thing is people who do know, they love this. They love the book. They love the movie. Yeah. They cannot get enough of it. They're constantly saying this is a must see. And I agree. My friend Nicole is the one who recommended the book to me, and she's read this book like 18 times. Like, she loves the story, the book, et cetera. So you're right. The people that know about it love it. Yeah. And so, you know, and I'm not going to say, like, even with, again, going with high tension, I do feel like I, when I say I look at it differently, not that I hate it, but I see what he was trying to do, and then he didn't quite accomplish that, if that makes sense. Because you see, you see, um, as the viewer seeing watching Intensity, this movie is not just only for people who love suspense or thriller or horror. I feel like this is a very universal movie. So, absolutely. You know, like, again, I really just feel like it, it just, the three hours completely go by. It's chilling. It has you at the edge of your seat. And this is, you know, I watched it, like I said, two days in a row. And yeah. I was able to see things, you know, again, the first time for fun, you know, I'll put it on and stuff. And the next thing I know, no phone in the hand. I'm just in, you know, in that world, really excited to be in that world. Yeah, so if I could just piggyback on to real quick to what you were saying about China, too. Like, I think in terms of the universal story and stuff, it is about this girl who decides she doesn't want to be a victim anymore. Yeah. But you really get to see as well, that's not just, a, oh, I'm not going to be a victim anymore, and bam. It's a struggle the whole way through to achieve that sort of independent status, that strength, that inner strength. It does not come easy. And it's not just the series of events. Those are definitely harrowing. But it's the sort of psychological issues that she has had, those demons from her childhood, from her mother. And I love, like, she uses it to help her get through situations, but then also to be like, okay, this is what my mother would do. I'm going to do the opposite. And that works for me. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to add on to what you were saying to that, because I, I think it was well said. And it is this sort of, that is something that horror fans, fans of film, anything of life can appreciate that sort of like arc of a person, but also to appreciate that it's not just like, on the, you know, like where's Marie in high tension She's she's scared in the first half, but it is almost like you rarely get to see her like, okay, I've got to go to the next step now. Like it's there, it, it, it is there, but like with China, you have a complete understanding of how friggin' hard it is for her to keep yeah. doing this, and it's not easy. Yeah, and then you know even with that, um, with high tension, you really don't know much of her background, you know. But I like the fact that we. We know her background. Like, yeah. immediately, that's how it starts off. We're thrown right into it. And I really appreciate that. And, like, a scene that really, um, like, just has been sticking with me, uh, which I kind of touched on before, was when, um, you know, China was a little girl and she was hiding under her parents' bed, 
well, mother and stepfather's bed. And, uh, you know, they started messing around. And it was just... The stepfather knew that she was there. Yeah. You know, and it's just like... I mean, I, I, I hate seeing movies, even when they abuse kids and everything like that. But with this one, you could only imagine, like, she grew up her whole life, her whole in child, entire childhood. This is all she knows. So... You know, as someone who who comes from this, which obviously you can't help where you come from, but she's really, truly trying to be a better person and trying to do the right thing. She could have ran away. She could have ran off, you know, act like nothing happened. But again, I love the fact that she didn't want to be a victim. And I feel like that's believable. And not like some movies that you see where it's just like, that's so far-fetched. Like, right. it's just, I, I can't say that enough because... Even though it is a, a movie, even though it is a thriller, um, you're going to be thrilled. It, it's, yeah. it's intensity, but it's kind of like you'll be entertained, but you'll also understand. So, you know, being connected to the characters is a great thing. Like, even with um, the villain, you know, he, yeah. he's clearly a, a sadistic, evil man, right? And it's, and it's like, okay, why is he like that? Does he just like, is it the adrenaline rush? You know, like, we don't know. We don't know. And it's just, he said, even when China asked him, like, you know, he basically said that he had a normal childhood. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that he, you know, he's doing it just because. And I feel like that's what makes it relatable. He he just seemed like a regular guy. And clearly he could talk to people. He yeah. could off as a normal person. So that is great storytelling. Well, if you look at it too, just adding to that, like China's childhood, she should be the one that grew up to be sort of like a homicidal maniac, whereas right. he should have been this great guy. But mm -hmm. it's like the reverse, you know, it's just, it is random, you know? And I also like the play on, um, like, Ed, like his motivations are all centered on, you know, it, it lives up to the title intensity, the film itself, but there's actually like with, with the movie and the book, like a, mo a motivation for that specific word intensity being used. It's that, I don't even know if Dean Koontz, when he was writing it, realized how intense the story was because it was focused on Edgler Vess's interpretation of what life is about, which is finding those intense moments. Yeah. Like he's, like we come to learn, again, spoilers, we, we come to learn that he is, he has this young girl in his basement named Ariel mm -hmm. and his whole motivation is to like drive her insane because he loves that crack. He feels like he can see, I mean, he is so far gone, but yet hold it together. You would never know. He seems like this decent human being almost, mm -hmm. but like he, um, which again, yes, John C. McGinley, McGinley's performance is superb. It's just superb. Yeah. But he's holding this girl in the basement because he wants to make her crazy. So like, we think like the whole time that, he found Laura, at least in the novel, I remember this too being a thing, like you just assume he's targeting like pretty women. But the real reason he targeted Laura was because of her brother. Her brother's this famous pianist. But it's really, it's even more random. It's just something because Ariel had a CD of this guy in her prior life. And he was trying to like kill this guy to make her crazy. Like it just goes to show like you don't know the motivations. It's not a clear cut. Right. Somehow in an Edgler Vess's brain, it went from here to here to here and it all makes sense to him. With, okay, I kind of want to touch on the gas station scene. Okay, because, yeah. You know, I, I felt like, you know, to me, that's when things were like, of course beforehand it was just crazy and serious, but that to me was like such a, a great moment, you know, yeah. I feel like a defining moment for it. It was just like, okay, what's, this is grippling. What's, what's going to happen? So, um, okay. What I thought was pretty weird was how Bess kept saying, oh, you know, my daughter, Ariel, she's going to love you. She'll love you to the store clerk. And it was just kind of like, that's really weird. You know, like it's, it's weird. Like at first it was just kind of like, okay, you know, but then he's saying, yeah, but she's only 14. And then it's just like, okay, do you like, is he abusing her? You know, is he doing something to her? Like that's, that's the vibe that it was getting. And I love the fact that the guy, the other guy who wasn't behind the counter, who's in the store as well, he was just like, you know, I don't find that funny when he said, oh, well, I'm just joking around. 
Because that isn't funny. Like, this is a young girl. Like, you just have a random picture. You keep on saying it's your daughter. You left the store. You, you came back. And then the fact that, you know, they already knew that something was up with him at that point. But it, it was just kind of like there was there was no escaping. I kind of, I probably would have just ran out the store. <laughs> because you know what I mean? What, what else can you do? Because you know he came yeah. back. Like, he already knows, you know? Yeah, sorry. The gas station scene, too, I have to agree. That's the turning point. That's when you start to realize, like, because he is sort of like, <clears throat> he's saying these horrifying words in an almost charming way and in almost right. like, I'm just one of the guys. Like, come on, you know, but it's also like horrifying what he's saying. And that, again, it comes down to a great performance, great direction. I just, I mean, this movie I could go on and on too, and it's hard because it is a three hour movie uh, that does go by quickly, just like you said, but yeah. like so many like nuances and stuff happen in this. Like it, you do, like I will I'd be the first to say that the production values from this don't feel, it's clearly was made in the late nineties, but I don't feel like it, I feel like it holds up well, very well Same. considering, because it is all about the story. It's It's almost a timeless story in the fact of like, Anything that China could do, she does, but it's not always in her favor, but sometimes it is. And it's just sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And that's what puts you at the edge of your seat, caring about these characters in terms of caring about the vulnerability and burgeoning strength of China, the sort of fascination, macabre fascination with the villain. But then like the, the just this, these series of events that are triggering like these emotions in the viewer, I think that are suspenseful and engaging and terrifying. But don't you, doesn't it all just come together and just make you love it even more? <laughs> it's beautiful. Because like we were saying earlier, that's one thing I love about it is that they show you how everything is possible or mm -hmm. everything could be done. Like with a little bit of logic, yeah. you don't have to, you don't really have to spend your disbelief in this movie. I think like, it's a it's a it's a series of insurmountable odds that become surmountable. I'm not sure if that would be the word I would use there, but like you, possible, they become possible. You're like, it's all good. That works. She can do that. Yeah. Like you, you're never like I was never once like. That's not gonna come right. on. Right. Okay, stretch the tr like everything in it. Like I don't know. I just love it. And even with that, like I love the fact with this character, you know, kind of like you said it's believable because he was on to her. Like he was on to the guys at the, at the gas station. It's believable. Yeah. And something else I thought was pretty cool. And I realized um, who this was, but the woman that China, um, you know, stopped on the road, she's from the faculty. It's Mrs. Olsen. Yeah. That's P well, Piper Laurie. She's the mom and Carrie too. I was like, Whoa, I, I, I love seeing her, you know, yeah, so Piper Laurie's terrific. I mean, she's the reason why my, when my friend showed me Twin Peaks for the first time, I was like, all right, I'll give the show a try. But I was like, Oh, Piper Laurie's in it. Okay. Uh, you, got me for, you got me for a couple episodes now. For our viewers out there, you read the book, you know, so um, how do you feel about the adaption? Do you feel like they did a good job with this miniseries? Yeah, they are incredibly faithful to it. Um, I think that like, <clears throat> I'm glad that it's a miniseries. It's one of the few cases, you know, I think people all the time make the sort of commentary about like adaptations of movie or novels into movies and what you lose, what you gain, how you can't really do often a direct play by play because of running time. But because it's a miniseries, they're able to really do that, um, really stay faithful to it. Um, and like I said, the book for me, also, uh, three pages in, I'm telling you, I, I have many, many books that I love and I enjoy, but quite a few of them take me at least a couple chapters before I'm like, I'll, I'd have to look at the, the actual print to know what it was. But I'm, I'm telling you, three pages in, I'm like, oh, I, what? Let's keep going. Like, I had to keep going because um, it is so much in her, like from China's point of view. And I think like there's got to be, not that I, I, I wouldn't mind if this movie was remade, but like I, I could understand why it could be attempted because the somewhere between high tension and the miniseries, I think a solid theatrical film is in there and tightening up a few things. You could have a two hour, two hour, 15 minute movie and um, still be rather faithful to the novel, which I thought, yeah, I think I think it's incredibly faithful for fans of the novel. 
if you haven't seen this movie, and from what I'm understanding, a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. um, Again, we it was it's the unfortunate time of the late '90s when it came out. We didn't have unless you would put a VHS tape in there and hit the record and remembered for both nights, you know, you weren't catching it. And I, because I, I I never saw it. And I I remember those days like remember remembering when there would be a big event movie on or something like that, and pff, no clue. I didn't even I was stunned when I learned there was an adaptation of it, especially because I had read the novel, saw High Tension, and I'm like, well, that's the closest adaptation. And I think I may have been fiddling around on YouTube or something, and then I'm like, oh, this was actually made into a miniseries, because it was also, this was, you know, 2000s, mid-2000s, when I was like, discovering this. So it wasn't really Wikipedia there, or, you know, you couldn't really, like, do this, check this, check this. And, um, well, I've always really liked Molly Parker, too. Uh, she's in uh, Lost in Space, the new series. Now she plays the mom, Maureen Robinson. But um, she was also in uh, Six Feet Under for a few episodes and stuff. So, like, I always kind of, like, she's one of those actresses that is always on the peripheral. You kind of know about her or you don't. But you, you're, she's one of those actresses I feel like you're kind of like, oh, I know her from something. And she she was a perfect China in this film. Yeah. Uh, I love, too, the play in the movie about their names, like China Shepherd, Edgler Vest, the way they play words on it, like, that you can create out of it. But, again... Um, a faithful adaptation that I think fans of the novel will love. And I think fans or not fans of High Tension should definitely check out. If you like High Tension, you're basically getting a sequel in it. You're getting High Tension and then the sequel. Or if you didn't like High Tension, you're getting a redo of High Tension with a much better ending in my right. opinion. At least more coherent, not so like shock value. There's shocking moments. Mm -hmm. And I will say, you know, yeah, it's not overtly gory like we were talking about, but it has its moments. But, yes. um, you know, what did you, did you, and you were happy to not being a fan or not knowing the novel and knowing how High Tension is. Would you say that the adaptation, did you like the ending because you were a fan of high tension, I believe before, but do you which ending do you prefer now out of the two? I feel like it depends, you know, because I feel like for intensity, with everything that we've been through, you know, it's just like we have a straightforward ending. And I wouldn't say that it's a happy ending, but it's not a bad ending because clearly this is um that that would be a spoiler. so i'll leave, I'll leave that alone. but it's it's a very straightforward ending. But right. high tension, um, I remember there were some things like it, it was a very shocking ending, but there were there were certain scenes where it's just like, well, how did she do that? How did that happen? Right, like, yeah. I, had, I had questions, but I, I see what, where they were trying to go, you know, with the like you said, the shock value. So it depends. It's like I feel like kind of like what you said, I meet more people who kind of dislike high tension ending. So kind of like what you said, it's kind of like, okay, if you're not a fan of High Tension or you don't like the ending, you need to watch Intensity because you kind of get, plus you kind of get more, you know, it's, it's, it's intense. It's like, it'll have you going through like so many emotions, you know, and it's like, I'm yeah. trying to choose my words carefully because with the ending, I think I'm more satisfied with Intensity's ending, but you know, with high tension, was it shocking? Yes. But I don't feel like I can think about it too much because then I have all these questions. With Everything starts to unravel a little. Right, right. Yeah. And then with intensity, you know, it really is like great storytelling, like outstanding performances. I didn't have any questions. It was just like, okay, this is that's that, you know? Um, yeah, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, give it spoilers. For sure. No, I, I understand completely what you mean. I think that High Tension definitely has the more like, bam, ending. And I think that's where people have their reaction of like, because I know for me, I was definitely like, I think it because the first time I saw it, I, I, I was, I just assumed that there had to be a credit for Dean Koontz at the end. Right. So I was like, so I still was enjoying it. And I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And then right. I'm like, oh, I'm like, but then I'm, but at first I'm like, great, that's great. I love that as a horror fan, that's sort of like, sucker punch but like good like you're like yes but then if you do think about it you are kind of like oh wait a minute that doesn't really make sense to this or that 
or this and now this doesn't make sense and what so you know if you for the first time through watching i tension the ending is definitely going to be more hit, go for the jugular than intensity in terms of the the final sequences but yes and i will say it you know the way intensity ends without i won't give any spoilers away but um it definitely has a a great climax an intense climax for lack of a better word but then, I mean, it definitely goes off into, you know, made for TV land, you know, like primetime audience, like right. sort of ending. And that's fine. I don't, you know, I love when horror movies end with like a bang. I love when they end with like a soft whisper, you know, and it definitely goes more for the soft whisper sort of thing, whereas high tension goes for the bam, gotcha, you know, and soft they both have their pros and cons. Right. I agree. Like it is like a soft whisper, but still very effective. Yeah, for sure. That's, for sure. That's it. That's it. Just great. Uh, just go watch it. Like <laughs> that's how I feel. Like if you haven't seen it, watch it. It deserves it. I think it deserves it. Considering like all the attention and high tension got, I would love for intensity to get a little wave more of it. Thanks everybody for joining us for another episode of the Rabbit Dog's House. Thank you, Zena, for joining me tonight. Have you guys all, what did you think about High Tension? Were you happy with the ending? Were you not happy with the ending? Are we, do we have some Dean Koontz fans out there? What are some of your favorite Dean Koontz novels or adaptations? Now don't forget, I'm Justin Steele. You can find me over at Wicked Horror, 411 Pop Culture, or on Twitter at Wicked Horror Justin. And this is Zena Dixon. You can find her under realqueenofhorror.com, Wicked Horror, or under her YouTube moniker, Real Queen of Horror, as she is the Real Queen of Horror. Thanks everybody for joining us. Have a good one.